Welcome to the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's online enrichment programming. We are going to do a lesson on vocabulary um, and all the words we're going to be going over today have to do with our theme for this week of conservation. Um, so uh, for those of you who are new to our online programming, my name is Marianne. I'm the education director at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy is a nonprofit and we are based down on Cape Cod, which is a region of Massachusetts, and we are focused in white shark conservation. Um, and so through research, public safety and education, we are really trying to ensure that we have white sharks for future generations. So all of you young ones at home, we wanna make sure when you grow up, there are white sharks off the coast that you can one day go and learn about. And so looking at our conservation vocabulary lesson for today, you know, these are just some words as we go forward into this week where we will be celebrating Earth Day on Wednesday. You know, our whole week and all of our lessons are centered around conservation. So these are some terms that we have been using in the past. We're going to continue to use. So we figured we'd do a quick vocab lesson for all of you at home. And if you look on our website, we have two different worksheets to go along with this, depending on how old you are and what level you're at. One is a matching. And so you can take the term that we talk about and you can actually, and that's the one over here. Um, so you can see over on this side where you can draw a line from the term to the correct definition, okay? But then on this side of the page, we have, if you're a bit older, you know, it can be really good to actually write out the definition that can help you to better remember. So as we talk through the term today, then you can write out a definition and it's good to put it in your own words so that you make sure you really understand what that word means. And just like the students in Miss Frizzle's class, we fully support and think that it's a great thing to do. Draw a picture to show your understanding, okay? And so that picture can really illustrate what the word means. So the first word we are going to look at today or in conservation vocabulary is actually defining what is conservation. So can anyone at home share that with us? In a lot of our videos, we've actually talked about, you know, what conservation is. Um, and there are a few different definitions to look at this word. So one is the prevention of wasteful use of a resource. So when you're talking about conserving something, all right, you are trying to make sure that you just don't waste something. It's not just being used in a poor manner where it's not being utilized to its fullest, okay? So, you know, it's preventing that from happening. We don't want to waste any of the valuable resources that we have available to us. We want to conserve them, all right? And when we look at conservation and conserve, you know, it's different forms, looking at the noun compared to the verb. Um, but really, when we look at conservation as a whole, another way to word this is, you know, making sure that we have something for future generations. We want to prevent it being wasted because we don't want it to be, you know, we want to make sure that it is here tomorrow, it's here the next day, and it's here for years to come, all right? So that's what conservation is looking at, you know, preventing the wasteful use of a resource. The next word is looking at balance. And when we've done some lessons looking at, you know, a shark's role in the ecosystem, and we've talked about, you know, our ocean food webs, you know, we've used this word balance. And when we look at it in terms of an ecosystem, okay, balance is a condition in which different elements are equal or in the correct proportions. So when we talk about conservation and we use the word balance, you know, that we want to make sure we have a balanced ecosystem, we want to make sure that all the living things in that ecosystem are, you know, at the appropriate levels. They're at a balanced amount. Because if we have too much of one animal, what that animal then feeds on, you know, if we have too much of it, then that means that they're going to eat all of that next level on the food chain. So we want to make sure that things are in balance. And that's something that we, you know, those people who manage our oceans and, you know, what resources we take from our ocean, this is something that they really look at is making sure that we keep things in a balance. Okay. So in conservation, you often hear this word looking at making sure that what resources are available and what living things we have in our oceans, 
whether it's plant or animal, are at that balanced amount to ensure the health of our ocean. So again, balance being a condition in which different elements are equal or in the correct proportions. Next word we're going to look at is habitat. So what is habitat? This is one you might have heard before. Some of you are thinking at home. Maybe you're drawing a picture to show a specific type of habitat. Habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal, plant, or other organism. So when we're talking about a habitat, we're talking about a living thing's home, okay? And plants have habitats in which they grow and thrive, as do animals, right? This is something all living things, they're going to be found in a specific habitat. And sometimes when we're looking at a habitat, we even have to look at the non-living things that are found in that habitat because they may be the structure that gives the protection for some of those living things. So when we look at a habitat and we look at protecting an organism's habitat to ensure that then that animal has a safe place where it can grow and live, we are looking at both the living and non-living things in that habitat to ensure the health and you know the environment around that habitat is you know something that is strong and healthy so that living things can grow and thrive in that habitat region so habitat being the natural home or environment of an animal plant or other organism and oftentimes when we talk about protecting you know different species different living things you're not only going to then protect the living thing you put in you know, measures to protect the habitat because if we are protecting the habitat, it's going to make protecting the living thing that much more effective. How about the word climate? And there's a lot of discussions around the world right now about climate um, and you know, changing climate. Is that helping anyone? Climate is the weather conditions prevailing in an area in general or over a long period. So when we talk about weather, weather is what is taking place right now, okay? So if I were to describe the weather here on Cape Cod today, it's cloudy, it rained a little bit this morning, it looks like there are some rain clouds forming and it's gonna rain again later today, but weather is really looking at right now, okay? Whereas when we look at climate, you know, we're looking at the weather conditions in an area over a longer period of time. And so in a lot of conservation conversations right now, climate is a big conversation because in some areas, we are seeing higher temperatures forming the climate for a region than we have historically before. Or in some places, we're seeing lower temperatures. So this idea of climate change is something that scientists are investigating. When we look at the climate in an area, if we're seeing a trend that it is changing, that could then affect, you know, the living things that live in that area. Because if we're talking about an increase in temperature over a long period of time, that might affect some of the plants that are growing in an area, right? And then some of the animals that live in that area might feed on those plants. So looking at climate, really evaluating and looking at the weather patterns over a period of time in a region, it has an effect on the habitat and what's growing and living in that area, okay? So that's where climate comes into this part of the conversation around co conservation. The next word, wildlife. So we talked about habitat, okay? And oftentimes then if we're talking about wildlife, we're talking about the living things that may be found in that habitat. So wildlife, just, you know, that term describes the wild animals collectively, all right? So not just looking at one species, but a group of wild animals that are native of a region. So that means they are found naturally in that place, okay? Um, and it also can sometimes include, you know, the plant life that is living in that area and can be found in that area. So wildlife being wild animals collectively, of a region, okay? So those native things, native living things in a region that are found there. And so again, then looking at climate, you know, the wildlife in an area has adaptations to survive in a climate that it's used to. So if that climate starts to change, 
is some of that wildlife then going to be able to live in that region anymore? Okay, so does that mean we might see some of that wildlife migrate and move to a different place because of the change in climate in the region where they first started out? The next word, ecosystem. Anyone know what an ecosystem is? Maybe just try to break it down. All right, we could break that into two words, eco and then system. All right, ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms in their physical environment. So when we're looking at an ecosystem, you know, this is when we really start to explore how the wildlife in an area is going to actually interact with one another, okay? And again, we're looking at all the living things. We're looking at how the plants interact with the animals, the animals interact with the plants, and we're really trying to evaluate how everything is connected in this system, okay? Um, and that's where that word system. So how are they playing off one another? How is what one thing is doing affecting other living things? So again, when we talk about an ecosystem, we're talking about a biological community, meaning a living community of interacting organisms in their physical environment. And then we have one more word for everyone today. And that last vocabulary term is pollution. So what does pollution mean? What do we think? Is pollution something that's good or is pollution something that's bad? If you're saying pollution is bad, you are correct. So when we talk about pollution, right, we're describing the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance or a thing that has harmful or poisonous effects. So right there, when you see that word harmful or poisonous, you know, if something is polluting an environment, meaning it is, you know, present there, or if it's being introduced into that environment, it's going to have a negative effect on it. And there's all different types of pollution, depending on the ecosystem that we are looking at, okay? Um, but so pollution, when we're looking at conservation, you know, this is, you know, a word that often comes up, you know, as scientists are out there and they're exploring and they're learning and they're seeing different ways in which environments have been polluted and then how that pollution can affect the ecosystem. Since maybe we see a pollution taking its effect on one animal, but then because that animal is affected, it then has an effect on all the animals and plants that that one interacts with. So then it's spreading throughout the ecosystem and having that harmful effect, okay? So these were our vocab words for today. Um, and these are words that we're gonna be using throughout the week this week, okay? So if you, I know we went through it a little bit quickly, but you know, this video is now going to be on our website. Um, I'm sorry, this is on our Facebook page here, so you can go back and rewatch it. And then we're going to take the vocabulary part of this lesson and we'll export that and also put it onto our YouTube channel. So you can go back later today and you can review. You can also, a great way when you're learning vocabulary, you look up the definitions to these words on your own, okay? Now, a lot of these terms, we took the noun form of them. You might find the verb form of them, so that being the action, okay? Um, so you can look at those different, you know, how they differ a little bit, but you can make your own definition for these words. Um, another great thing to help you review, draw a picture, you know, really take your time and make an illustration to show your understanding of these terms. We hope that everyone has a great day today, and we look forward to seeing you all back here this week. So thank you everyone for tuning in this morning. And I hope to see everyone back later this week. Have a good one.